I wasn't fully prepared for this and if you enjoy deck builder games you might not be prepared for Spellhack either. Spellhack is a fast paced survival deck builder roguelike with vibrant 80s aesthetic. In this game you will acquire techno spells, essential cards and defend portal from magical beasts in a computer like world. The game is divided into day and night cycles, during the day you can explore and prepare while night is reversed for a battles where you must protect the portal by holding off monsters on the down. It's important to know that you don't need to defeat all the monsters as the numbers are infinite. Your goal is simply to survive until morning the process then repeats. I usually discuss visuals later in my videos, but Spellhack is different. The entire game is played in 4x3 aspect ratio, framed by a retro frames screen setup. You view the game from your own perspective with a background filled with nostalgic items like Commodore computers and other retro devices. Background isn't just for show, it becomes part of the gameplay during key moments with light and shadow effects that enhance the experience. The soundtrack is another highlight, full of nostalgic vibes that I enjoyed so much I found myself tapping along on my keyboard. Sorry keyboard, a few times I even hit enter instead of Z or X by mistake. You find yourself in a Doom City, a place full of secrets and plagued by summoned beasts. You play as a spell hacker, a tech wizard tasked with protecting this mysterious city from the dangers lurking in the night. Hired by mega corporations, you must protect both the city and your client. There is more to the story, but since I played the demo, I couldn't delve deeper into the narrative. The controls in Spellhack are fun throwback to the 80s when most actions were handled by the keyboard. You use the Z to select and accept, X to cancel, Enter to end your turn in a battle, and H to access the help panel, which is packed with useful information. While using a mouse might be faster, the clunky charm of keyboard controls add to the retro immersion. Welcome to Doom City. Both day and night circles are 12 hours long, though I'm not sure if this entirely failed. During the night, you must survive for these 12 hours, with each turn representing one hour. By day, you can explore Doom City to upgrade your spells, add new ones and more. You simply select an area and the scanning process gives you two options, each consuming a specific amount of time. You can gain new techno spells or acquire random ones, as well as buff your spells with status effect. Some actions are beneficial, while others are less so, and the inability to back out of some events can be frustrating. On one particular annoying event is the Noxious Blade, which forces you to destroy one of your techno spells permanently. If you need to get rid of one of unwanted techno spells, then it's great. If you are unlucky and get stuck with two unwanted events, you might have to waste a day or at least few hours preparing for the next battle. Despite the occasionally clunky controls, the mechanics are simple and easy to grasp, making it possible to beat the game with practice. Quick note, if you enjoy this type of content and like discovering new indie games, please subscribe to my channel. I showcase indie games to connect players with less known titles titles and their developers. A win-win situation for everyone. Now let's get back to the video. When night falls, the battle phase begins. Your main goal is to survive until morning and protect the portal. The battlefield is divided into several lines and by selecting your techno spells you will choose which line to target. Challenge lies in thinking strategically and quickly. At the start of the, each battle you are informed about the creatures you will face. These aren't viruses or demons, but animals. Each has a unique ability, some of which affect the time you have to complete your turn. If the timer runs out, a new turn and hour begins, bringing fresh techno spells and pushing your enemies closer to the portal. Even if one enemy reaches the portal, you have a limited number of health points for the portal. So a single breach isn't catastrophic, but multiple breaches can lead to bank of a round. You can use spells like walls to block enemies, but some creatures, like birds type, can bypass these barriers. Other spells push back enemies, but you will often need to eliminate some of them. Techno spells consume energy, which replenish partially each turn. By destroying enemies, you can collect bloody energy, required for more powerful spells that consume less regular energy. There is a plenty of variety in how you can approach battles. Quick modes boost your attack for a specific turn and some techno spells inflict status effects that, that, that damage opponents over time. While the mechanics are engaging, many of them have been seen in other games, but with different names. Enemies also have varying abilities, so they need to think and adapt as the situation changes on the screen. 
The most interesting aspect of Spellhawk is its bizarre synthwave 80s setting. The unique old school vision and retro background are very cool. The controls might feel clunky compared to modern games, but that's the part of the retro charm. When I play it with a keyboard, the game is also fully compatible with controllers. There are plenty of cards with over 150 Tecto spells and 40 different enemies, each with unique abilities. Sometimes the battles will be easier, other times more challenging, but as with any deck builder, there is always the risk of facing an enemy that counter your deck. I hope the final product includes some way to handle the scenario as it can be frustrating to spend hours building a deck only to face an unbeatable opponent. If you are a fan of the colorful 80s vibe and retro art style, Spellhack should be on your radar. If you enjoy deck builders with roguelike mechanics, it's worth checking out too. However, if you are looking for a revolutionary gameplay experience, Spellhack might not fully fight that need. It's a decent title with fun ideas, but it won't overshadow your other favorite games. Spellhack is a bizarre, unique and a little clunky, but most importantly, it's fun. If you are interested in checking out Spellhack for yourself, there is a link in the description. And if you want to discover more indie games you might not have heard of, consider subscribing to my channel. I'm here to help you find the hiding gems. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day or evening and see you next time. Bye.